Thank you so much for purchasing our Remote Desktop Commander Suite solution. To get started deploying it in your RDS, Citrix, or WBD network, please continue to watch this video. Let's first talk about where to install the Remote Desktop Commander Suite software and the type of resources required on the virtual machine where it's being installed. I've ordered these in order of first preference to last preference. Every network is different and every IT department has a different budget. So my first choice would be for you to deploy our software on a dedicated or a management virtual machine with a dedicated instance of SQL Server Standard. Uh, that VM should have about four vCPUs, around 16 gigabytes of RAM, and 250 gigabytes of storage available. My second choice would be a dedicated or management VM with the SQL Server instance elsewhere on your network. Um, and on that configuration, you'd have about two vCPUs, four to eight gigabytes of RAM, and 15 gigabytes of storage. And your SQL Server standard would be located on another virtual machine, or you could be using Azure SQL. For my third choice, you'd be using a dedicated or management VM with SQL Server Express installed locally on that virtual machine. Um, and that virtual machine would have at least two virtual CPUs, four to eight gigabytes of RAM, 15 gigabytes of storage, uh, again with SQL Express installed locally. Now there's some issues with SQL Express in terms of how much data can be stored, and we're going to talk about that here in just one moment. Finally, my fourth choice, if you have no other place to put our software other than on a terminal server or WVD host itself, in that scenario, your WVD host or your terminal server would need to have four gigabytes of RAM and 15 gigabytes for storage on SQL. And keep in mind that our software will be competing somewhat, not a lot, but somewhat for resources on that terminal server and SQL Express can use a gigabyte of memory on its own. So if you do that, make sure your terminal server is well provisioned and is not running at redline currently. Now, some of you may be wondering, can I use SQL Server Express? Because it's free, right? Well, it depends. SQL Express is limited to only one gigabyte of RAM and 10 gigabytes of storage. A good rule of thumb is, if you have between 1 and 10 RDS or WBD hosts, and you do not plan on deploying our agent service to collect advanced performance metrics like CPU and memory use per user and per process, or do advanced user monitoring with screenshot recording, you can use SQL Express. Also, if you have only one or two RDS or WBD hosts, and you plan on deploying our agent service to collect advanced performance metrics like CPU and memory use per user per process, or do that advanced user monitoring I just mentioned, you can use SQL Express. Otherwise, you really need to use SQL Server Standard or Azure SQL with our software because the volume of data collected by our agent will quickly exceed 10 gigabytes, even with the automatic database pruning features enabled. Another thing you need to do before installing our software is determine the user account in your domain that our software service account will run under. Since this account pulls all sorts of information from your hosts, it needs to be an administrator on each host it pulls, as well as on the virtual machine where you are installing our software. Now, you may be tempted to use a domain admin account, but from a security standpoint, it's better, when possible, to create a dedicated domain account for our service that's a domain user, and then place it into the local administrators group on each system that is monitored and on the machine where our software is installed. If you already have a domain group that is in the administrators group on your RDS or WVD hosts, you can place your service account in that group. Otherwise, use the computer management snap-in or PowerShell to add the new service account into the administrators group on each of the monitored hosts.
One other prerequisite you need to attend to before installing the Remote Desktop Commander Suite software is making sure the appropriate Windows firewall exceptions have been set on the terminal servers and WBD hosts you will be monitoring. If you have the Windows firewall enabled on your hosts, please make sure to allow the following three exceptions, Remote Event Log Management, Remote Service Management, and WMI. You can do this individually via the control panel on each host, or you can set a group policy for all of these hosts using the Group Policy Editor. In all cases, make sure that the domain profile is enabled, which permits the Remote Desktop Commander service to pull the computer successfully via the internal domain network only. Okay, so you've decided on the version of SQL Server to use, you've created or selected the service account you will use with our software, and you have made sure to adjust Windows Firewall exceptions on the hosts you'll be monitoring. Now you can proceed with installation. Step through the rest of the setup and let Remote Desktop Commander install its components on your virtual machine or physical machine where it will run. You will soon encounter a licensing message. When you do, Click the Close and Start Licensing Tool button. Then, browse and select the license file you received in an email from RDPSoft's customer service team. Also, enter in the email address and customer service number associated with that license file. Then click Install License from File. With the license installed, you will be taken to the initial setup wizard. Here is where you will assign the service account our software will use as well as connect it to the SQL Server instance you plan on using. First, select the domain or workgroup containing the servers you will be monitoring. Make sure to enter in the short NetBIOS version of your domain if it's not already present in the list. Next, enter in your service account in the format of short domain name backslash username and enter the service account password twice. Now it's time to link Remote Desktop Commander to SQL Server. Click the Run SQL Setup Wizard button to get started. As mentioned earlier, if you have a small RDS or AVD environment with just a few servers, you can install and use SQL Express. If that's the case on your network, select I want to install use a local instance of Microsoft SQL Server Express on this system. Then click Next and click the Install SQL Server Express button. Click OK to let the SQL Express setup package unzip its files and start the setup process. Once the SQL Server Express setup process completes successfully, the SQL Server setup wizard will return. So click Next so that Remote Desktop Commander can create its database on the SQL Express instance. 
Once that's done, click Next again so it can verify connectivity to the new database. Then click Finish to complete the SQL Setup Wizard. If you have a larger RDS or AVD environment, and you have access to a full SQL Server standard or enterprise database, you can have Remote Desktop Commander create a database on that SQL Server, which frees you from the 10 gig size constraint of SQL Express. To choose this option, launch the SQL Server Setup Wizard again. This time, indicate that you have a full version of Microsoft SQL Server and click Next. If the account you are installing Remote Desktop Commander with has full admin rights to your SQL Server, and it also has sysadmin rights, meaning you're effectively a DBA on that SQL Server, you can have Remote Desktop Commander automatically create its database and objects remotely on that SQL Server. To do this, type in the name of your SQL Server. Remember to add a backslash and instance name if your SQL Server has multiple named instances, Otherwise, just enter the SQL Server name. Then click the ellipsis button to make a connection to the SQL Server to retrieve the default directory for new databases. If you want to use a different drive and directory, enter it here and make sure to use a path local to the SQL Server. Then click Next. Finally, click Next again to verify connectivity to the new SQL database that was created on your database server and click Finish to complete the SQL Server setup wizard. If you work in a larger organization, you may have a dedicated database administrator or DBA team that controls your SQL servers. If that's the case, you can use the SQL Server Setup Wizard to build a database object creation script for your DBA team. To do so, enter in the full name of the SQL Server that your DBA wants you to use for our application. Remember to add the instance name at the end if using a SQL named instance. Then click the Create Script with Instructions for DBA button. This will launch a file in Notepad. Save this script file and send it to your DBA. Then have your DBA follow the instructions in the script file. Using the SSMS tool, have them copy the script into a SQL Query Editor window. Then have them create a new database called RDP Reporter on the SQL Server. Per the script instructions, make sure that 1. They set the database and transaction logs file sizes to auto-grow automatically. 2. They set the recovery model on the database to simple. 3. They set the database collation to SQL Latin 1 General CP1 CI AS. And 4. They make sure the Remote Desktop Commander Service Account and any other admins or help desk users who will use Remote Desktop Commander hold the DB Data Reader and DB Data Writer permissions on this database. Once the RDP Reporter database is created, they can execute the script in the Query Editor window. Once the script has created the database, come back to the SQL Setup Wizard and choose Next. Once the SQL Setup Wizard has validated the connection to the database, click Next again, and then Finish to close the wizard. Finally, there may be one other type of SQL Setup scenario that applies to you. If you're planning on using Remote Desktop Commander with Azure SQL, or if you need to connect to a SQL Server outside of the primary tenant domain where our software is installed, you will need to connect to your SQL database using standard security. To do so, create a blank database in Azure SQL or on a standard SQL server. Then create a standard SQL login, map it to your blank database, and give the login DB owner rights on this new database. Then choose the Link to an existing DB on Microsoft SQL Server or Azure SQL with standard SQL authentication option in the initial setup wizard and click the ellipsis button. From here, create an ODBC connection string to the Azure SQL or SQL database and test the connection.
Once the connection tests are good, click OK to return the connection string to our software. When you click Check and Finalize Configuration, Remote Desktop Commander will automatically create its database objects in the new database and will use this connection string with standard SQL authentication going forward. Once you have selected and configured the appropriate SQL Server choice, click the Check and Finalize Configuration button on the left-hand side. If you've entered things correctly, the software will be able to assign and bind your service account and set up the link to the SQL database you established in the previous step. If there are any failures during this process, they will be noted in the configuration results. Double-click on the error icon to obtain more information about the error and go back to the Configure Service Account or Configure Database section to resolve the issues. Then click Check and Finalize Configuration again. Once everything is set up correctly, the Remote Desktop Commander Configuration tool will launch and you can begin adding servers for monitoring. By the way, before we discuss the next section of the Initial Setup Wizard, where you add RDS and AVD hosts for monitoring, I wanted to point out a very important resource in case you're having difficulty getting SQL Server Express, Azure SQL, or SQL Server installed or configured. For all SQL-related questions, go to rdpsoft.com forward slash SQL Troubleshooter. There you will find a guided wizard that will provide you with tips and workarounds to the most common SQL-related issues, including setup and configuration tips.